Hi guys, this is Gregor von Personas and welcome to a brand new series covering the Atom SQ pad controller. In this first part, I'm gonna talk about the Atom SQ as a keyboard instrument, which can also be used to um, play drums. In the second episode, we're gonna look at pattern sequencing with the Atom SQ. And then in the third and final one, we are going to look at one of the key aspects of the Atom SQ that hasn't been covered in too many tutorials yet. And that is the Atom SQ as a production controller and DAW Navigator. The Atom SQ is structured by the Song, Instrument, Editor and User pages. And depending on which one you have selected, you can see that we get a different set of commands here in this menu display. And these commands can be selected and changed with the rotary encoder here and the buttons that you see here on top and at the bottom of the display. Today we're going to talk mainly about the instrument page because the instrument page is the most relevant for anybody who is looking to play the Atom SQ as a keyboard or drum instrument. The first section on the instrument page is dedicated entirely to instrument browser and the navigation of it. Because the Atom SQ has such a nice display, which the original Atom didn't have, this brings some inherent advantages, particularly when it comes to browser navigation, which is what the first page on the instrument section is dedicated to. For example, we can press this soft button here to instantly open up the browser. This was also possible on the original Atom. But now we have this very nice info display here, so we can browse our library of instruments without having to double check everything with the computer display. You can also use these very handy arrow keys, which work exactly like you would expect it from a computer keyboard. And that helps a lot, not just with browser navigation, but also with track navigation, arranging and so forth. Very, very nice. And now I can just select the presence, for instance, the instrument player in uh, Studio One and browse to a piano sound here. Maybe this one is nice and then load it up also straight from the Atom SQ. As soon as I do that, the instrument is being loaded and also with a respective effects chain because yes, effects chains and instrument presets can be loaded and stored in one single file in Studio One. And with that, we pretty much covered all the important navigational features of the first page on the instrument section already. There's still the note effects editor that is mention worthy, of course, but we will talk about that a little bit later. But what about the pads? Because all of these great integration features don't get us very far if the pads themselves aren't that playable, right? Well, fortunately, I have some great news. The Atom SQ is incredibly responsive and velocity sensitive, which a piano, I think, is the perfect sound to demonstrate this with. I'm not a great pianist, but have a listen. How sensitively and how attentively the Atom SQ is responding to the varying degrees of pressure that I'm applying. I'm holding down the bank A button here on the Atom SQ, which has a sustain pedal function, whereas the other bank buttons in this mode can be used for octaving up and down. They're highly sensitive and they even come with adjustable threshold and velocity curves so that you can really make sure that they're matching your playing style and that you prevent accidental note inputs. Oh, and as you can see, they also support poly pressure. If you haven't heard of poly pressure before, that's very useful for people playing multiple notes at once, like for example, chords and stuff like that, and then hold down their fingers and apply a bit more pressure to have a modulation source that could be opening up filters, increasing the intensity of reverbs, things like that. The great thing about poly pressure, meaning pressure being read from multiple notes at a time instead of just mono pressure, one note at a time, is that I could hold a chord and then just press down the higher notes of the chord a bit more and that would lead to a more reverby or more bright note that's sustaining while all the other ones that I'm not pressing down as hard are staying unaffected. This can give you a tremendous amount of expressiveness, almost like a super complex automation, but without any effort because it's happening as you're playing. And this used to be a feature for the absolute top keyboards such as the CS80, and now it's also available in the Atom SQ, a controller that I must say is just a steal for the price. 
Now another thing that I want to point out is that this layout that you see right now is only one of the available three layouts in Atom SQ. And it's very smart in selecting the right one automatically, also because of the great synergies between Studio One and Atom SQ. We have the piano view, the drum view, and the pattern view, which we're going to discuss in more detail in the next video. Now where the piano view really shines, in my opinion, is when it comes to scales and note effects. Let's talk about scales first, which you're going to find on the page to the left from the one that we're currently on. And here we have three different choices. We can go for a keyboard layout. We can go for a continuous layout, meaning that the pitches are going from 1 to 16 and then continuing to go up from step 17 to 32. So it's like a left to right, left to right layout as opposed to the chromatic layout. And we also have a scale only mode. And this is really interesting uh, in particular if you are playing a scale that you're not you know, very comfortable with or if you're playing pentatonic because essentially it becomes virtually impossible to play wrong notes, which can be incredibly fun when improvising and stuff like that. Let's look at the uh, keyboard mode first and then choose a different scale. So for example, if I have the root note set to C and this is major, this would be C major. And as we can see, all of the top notes, all of the black notes here, the black keys are not illuminated anymore. They're still accessible. But this is kind of a visual guide so that I know which keys are part of my currently selected scales and which ones I should avoid if I want to create harmonies. And if you go to scale only, then all of the notes that are not part of your currently selected scale are just being quantized to the note that is part of your scale that you're closest to, right? So here we only have notes that are part of A minor. I can also set this to something like minor pentatonic, and now it would be virtually impossible for me to play a wrong note here. Very, very cool, especially for improvising and stuff like that. The range is kind of an offset, meaning that if you need to access a note like here on the left and it's just below your root note, then you can simply um, adjust your offset here to make sure that you can still play that without having to go up and down an entire octave, which you can also do. Um, this is the same result, you know, turning the octave here as it would be going through the bank buttons. And once again, the button A here on the bank buttons is used for sustain. There's also a switch to always have full velocity, uh, no matter how hard you're hitting the pads. So that covers the piano view and the scales. Next, let's look at the drum view, which instantly gets selected as soon as you change your part to drum view or if you have an Impact XT loaded. So let's go back to the navigation page here on the instrument section and open up the instrument browser. And there it is already the Impact XT and then load it up. So now you can see a completely different layout than the one that we've just seen from the piano view. We have not just a continuous layout now where the pitch is going from pad 1 to 16 over to 17 and 32, but also we get a layout that is color coded in accordance to the colors that we can set here in Impact XT. This is great because it enables you to instantly start playing without having to audition the entire kit first. This is just one of many great examples for the great synergies between hardware and software here at Personas. Now let's take a look at the node effects that you have access to in Studio One Professional and that you can control brilliantly with the Atom SQ, which really help you get the most out of these features that we just looked at. So to demonstrate node effects, I'm going to go one page to the right, open up the instrument editor. In this example, I have a My Thai instance prepared with just the default sound. Okay, and now I'm going to go one page further to the right here in the instrument section. And this is where we're going to see uh, the two main node effects that we want to concentrate on. And that is the quarter effect and that is the arp effect. You can very simply add it by tapping the soft button. And this is without the arpeggiator. This is with the arpeggiator. 
Of course, you don't need Studio One Professional to get this arpeggiator function. You can still use Node Repeat, which I'm going to show you later. But the arpeggiator effects can do so many more things than a traditional arpeggiator can. If you can get Studio One Professional, it makes so much sense, especially with Adam SQ. So with that said, all of the parameters can be controlled directly from the Atom SQ as long as the plugin editor is in the foreground. And this functionality is enabled by the control link box that you see here, where you can set the Atom SQ. And as soon as you do that, the encoders here on the Atom SQ are following my current plugin selection. If the Mai Tai is in the foreground, you can see that the Atom SQ is immediately ready to control all of these Mai Tai parameters. If I'm going back to the arpeggiator, and that's in the foreground now, then I can adjust parameters on the arpeggiator from the Atom SQ again without having to do anything on the Atom SQ. Everything is communicated directly from Studio One automatically to the unit. So, for example, I can engage hold so that I don't have to hold down the pass all the time. And as soon as I go back to the Mai Tai, I can just tweak that sound immediately. Best of all, this works the exact same way with third-party instruments as well. This is not native to Presonus plugins. And you can either auto-populate all of your parameters directly to AdamSQ or make your assignments manually. And all of these assignments are going to be remembered globally across all of your songs. The mapping of third-party parameters to the encoders of AdamSQ is just a breeze, by the way. Simply turn the parameter that you want to change in your software then turn the respective encoder on AdamSQ, and then click on the inverted triangle there in the control link area at the top left so that it turns yellow. And they're assigned. Best of all, these assignments are global, meaning that as I'm opening up a new song, the parameter mapping is instantly being remembered, so I don't have to do it twice. Combined with the automatic focus on the currently active plugin, this is giving you the real sought-after console one workflow that many users want. This is incredibly powerful stuff and will be covered in more detail in my part Adam SQ as a production controller. The control strip can also be assigned to a number of things, like for example the channel volume, the pitch bend, the mod wheel, and much more. You also have these plus minus buttons here to control either pitch bend or breath modulation. So that's the arpeggiator. Very fun, very powerful, but check it out how cool it is when we add the quarter effect right behind it in the note effects chain. Now these note effects are only available in Studio One Professional, but you can probably imagine the creative possibilities from here. Last but not least, let's take a look at the note repeat functions today, which cover all the basic arpeggiator needs, even if you don't have Studio One Professional. And the touch strip can also be assigned to the note repeat value, and it can be an incredibly fun workflow. Let me show you. Note repeat has been super popular with the original Adam already, and the Adam SQ is continuing on that path very much. So the note repeat functions can be accessed on the very next page inside of the uh, instrument section here, and you can simply toggle that on and off by tapping the soft button here. When note repeat is off, it's just one note, and when note repeat is on, it's actually getting quantized in accordance with the click. You can just use the transport functions here to uh, demonstrate that. Now we're in a quarter triodic timing. And I can quite simply adjust this with this rotary encoder here as soon as this is selected. This is the kind of workflow that you can always remember and memorize for the entirety of Adam SQ. Just go to the menu item you want, select it with the button below, and then use the encoder on the right to adjust your individual parameter. This is also going to get very important when we discuss the pattern sequencing mode in the next episode. So subscribe if you haven't already to not miss out. Then we can use the gate next to it to kind of set the length of these note repeats. You get the idea. 
And the note repeat can also be assigned to the touch strip, which is incredibly fun. You can already tell that I could go on for hours with this thing. It's really just the tip of the iceberg that we've covered so far. So I hope that you tune in next time as well. And we're going to take a deep dive into the step sequencer. Until then, thank you so much for watching.